I'm on my favorite Arch Linux uh, distro right now, um, and I'm getting ready to log in. So let me go ahead and do that. And uh, let me log into my uh, Arch Linux distribution. It's my daily driver on the laptop. And um, I'm in the terminal right now. Um, and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, CD out and let's see where I'm at right now. I'm in uh, Home Data Pioneer. Data Pioneer is my username on my system. Let me clear the screen. Uh, what I'm going to do first of all is uh, I'm going to uh, log in to one of my servers. It's on my Raspberry Pi. I've got several servers running out there. Um, I've got the Node Red server, SSH uh, daemon server, I've got a very secure FTP daemon server, VSFTPD, and I also have a uh, Pi Hole server, and I'll get into some of those later on. Um, but let's go ahead, uh, let me SSH, the user is Pi, and the IP address of the Pi on the network is 192.168.1.90. So I'm going to SSH as user pi into 192.168.1.90 and I'm going to go ahead and supply the password. And that's letting me in. So I'm logged in now as, as the pi user. Um, typically you would not do this uh, for security reasons, but I'm going to go ahead and just elevate my privileges to uh, root user. Uh, because often I forget to um, sudo <laughs> and I have to run the command twice so I'm just going to go ahead and bypass that so I am, uh, who am I? I am the root user right now where am I? Uh, home pie alright okay so let's uh, clear the screen and um, oh, okay clear alright uh, the Raspberry Pi that I'm on right now, uh, and I am logged in as root, as you can see here, and I just proved that a few seconds ago, um, is running a, a derivative of Debian Linux, Debian 9, uh, called the Debian Stretch. Uh, actually, the operating system is tailored for the Raspberry Pi, so it's a Raspbian OS, R-A-S-P-B-I-A-N, which is De Debian Stretch, basically. Uh, a derivation or derivative of Debian 9. And so uh, one of the commands you just saw that you cannot use is CLS, okay? You have to use clear, all right, to clear the screen. That's okay. In Arch Linux, I can use CLS or clear, either one. All right, so the file that actually controls uh, the operation of the SSH daemon server is a file that's out on CD, Etsy, uh, SSH and let me do a long listing of that and the file is called sshd underscore config one of the ways that you can harden your SSH daemon server is to uh, uh, configure, reconfigure rather or change some of the shed settings in your SSH underscore daemon uh, SSH daemon underscore config file and so let's take a look at that. I'm on the nano end of that. Uh, so let's go nano sshd underscore config. All right, and here it is. And so this is a file uh, that is an ssh underscore uh, daemon underscore config that is uh, in OpenBSD. All right, and so it is. Uh, uh, Open SSH, not really the old SSH that you're, you may be used to seeing in Linux, but it's Open SSH. And so by default, I'm just going to call it SSH, not Open SSH. All right, so one of the things you can do is obviously you can uh, change the port number that SSH listens to. So one of the ways to harden it is to come down, and uh, down here I can take this pound sign off. Uh, here for um, commenting out and so that when I restart the server save this file restart the server um, this file will get reread and it will change one of the things you can do here 
what most people do is change the port number to like port 222 instead of port 22 or any port really that you want to use uh, you'd like to keep it below 1024 you could change this port number to 756 I mean it doesn't matter what port number you give it um, a lot of people think that that's a way to secure your SSH really isn't um, the only the only advantage you have I say it isn't because it's somebody can easily find out which port SSH is listening on by using a uh, port sniffer and so they just sniff it until it sees SSH running on port 756 so it's really not a way to get around uh, a security problem uh, by doing that uh, but people do it anyway and you know for people who may not know that you can use a port sniffer and uh, locate the port that SSH is listening on I uh, wouldn't know and so that might stop them but it's not going to stop everybody so I, I really don't think that's an advantage here. Uh, one of the advantages however for changing the port um, is that you can reduce the amount of log uh, logs that are written here in the system uh, on the Pi or any uh, Linux system for that matter. The amount of information that gets logged in your uh, uh, var log uh, would be reduced. Why? Because a lot of bots write to that log. Uh, when bots try to log into your SSH server, um, and so it, they un they typically look at port 22. They don't look at anything else. And uh, and so if you change the port, you're not going to get a lot of bots that write to it. And so that's one advantage you might have. I'm not going to change it. Uh, the reason that I'm not going to change it, obviously, is because I don't want to have to change. Um, this port number on the applications that look for SSH. Also, if you uh, change the port number, then you're going to have to notify people outside of your local area network who might want to SSH or might need to SSH into your Pi um, or applications that might need to do it. Uh, you're going to have to inform them of the changed port number. All right, and so just to leave it at port 22 is fine. Down here, you can uh, you can even change uh, what address that uh, SSH listens on. Uh, I'm not going to modify that either. What I'm am going to do though is I'm going to get down here to an area um, that uh, you know that really is a means of securing your SSH server, and that's under your authentication area. One of the things that we can do here, and these are all commented out right now. And the reason they're commented out is because uh, later on I'm going to, in a different uh, video, I'm going to show you an application called Fail to Ban. And it takes into consideration a lot of the uh, restrictions that you could make in this file here. But if you wanted to, you could change the log grace time, login grace time. It's currently set for two minutes if you uh, uncomment this out here and resave the file. Um, the login grace time is the amount of time that a person has to log in once they access your server with an SSH session uh, and start to log in. They have two minutes to do the login or they get locked out um, and eventually would get banned. Uh, and through another file that we'll talk about in another episode of securing your SSH daemon server, uh, and which is deny hosts. And so let's look on the rest of this file. Permit root login, uh, prohibit the root uh, password uh, to get uh, logged in to SSH. Yeah, that's something you definitely want to do. Uh, and that's one of the things that I'm going to look at right now uh, for securing or hardening your SSH daemon is to not permit root login. <clears throat> and so by uncommenting this line here, I'm saying permit root login, prohibit password, uh, I'm saying prohibit the password for root to log in. So I'm basically saying root cannot log in here. <clears throat> Another way to do it would be to, excuse me, would be to say uh, permit root login uh, equals no. But by prohibiting the password, I'm doing the same thing. Um, <clears throat> max authorized retries here or tries. Um, I could uh, uncomment this out here and change this down to say three, okay, to allow fewer tries of logging into your SSH. But I'm gonna take care of that in the fail to ban, so I'm not gonna need that. 
when I show you that later on in another video. So let's go ahead and comment that back out. Max number of sessions, 10. Um, I'm going to leave that as the way it is. Uh, let's come on down and let's look at the rest of this file. So one of the ways that we've looked at now hardening the um, SSH daemon server is to uh, disallow root. And the reason for that, uh, as I mentioned uh, now, and I didn't mention earlier, is that a person does get access to your server. Um, if you prohibit root login, one of the ways that a person is going to, or a hacker is going to try to get into your SSH, obviously, is they're going to try the root user. And if they can get in, then guess what? They have, they have root uh, privileges. They're elevated automatically. So you want to prohibit that. And so let's go on down. Um, one of the other things that we want to look at here is something I added to this file. It wasn't here by default. And that is these three lines here. The first line is commented, is allow users and groups. And that's just a comment. Uh, allow users uh, will allow only specific users to log into your SSH daemon server here on the Pi. I mean, for instance, if I had test user as one of the users, uh, and if I had uh, you know data pioneer as another one that I wanted to specifically allow uh, to log in, and then commented out this line here, and then uh, save the file, restarted and this file got, gets reread, then that means that only test user and data pioneer would be able to log in. Uh, that would be okay. Um, it would be very secure, as a matter of fact. Nobody else could log into your, your uh, SSH server. The only problem is, is uh, I don't like to do it that way. Uh, I would rather uh, assign people to groups, and then uh, that way only a member of that group can log in. I think that's a better way of handling it. So let me comment that one out. Let me come down here and let me uncomment this line. And let me uh, change this to uh, admins. Okay, so I'm going to say only members of the admins group are allowed to log in to my SSH server. All right, now I do not currently have Pi user, okay, a member of admins. And so I'm not going to restart the SSH server here until I have completed that process. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and save this file. So let's do a Control X and Yes to save. All right, and so in order to create, uh, let me, first of all, let me look and see if I have an admins group. I don't think I do. And so the file that controls that is, uh, let's cat that file. It's C Etsy backslash Etsy backslash group. All right, and so right now at the bottom of this file I do not have an admins group so let's add that and so group add is the command we use all right and group add and then admins is the group I want to add all right and so let's rerun that file and just take a look at Etsy group and now I do have an admins group here okay uh, assigned in the system or created in the system. And so now what I want to do is I want to take the Pi user and I want to add that Pi user to the admins group. Otherwise, uh, they're not going to be able to log in uh, to SSH. All right. And so um, let's go ahead and do a user mod and let's do attack little a g. What that little a does is appends the uh, group that I put at the end of this line here for this command as an additional group that this user belongs to in addition to the general group that they belong to or the default group which is the capital G alright and so tack little ag and the group is admins alright and the user is pi alright so that should add pi to the uh, the uh, appended group of admins and so let's go ahead and take a look at that let's run this uh, command again to look at the group and so here we have admins and if we come up uh, and let's look at the pi user um, pi is here okay and so uh, pi is a member of its own group pi which is 1000 if you come down to admins however the admins group and we have Pi as a member of that group now, which did not exist before. 
All right, so we've taken care of that. And so now let's go ahead and exit out of here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and restart the server. And to do that, I'm going to run a service. Um, and uh, SSH restart. Uh, I'm not root right now, so that's telling me, it's warning me that I'm not root. So let me put down as root. Let me do the password for root. And authentication is complete. So that means it restarted the server. If I want to check the status of that, I can do a service um, SSH status. And I can see that the SSH daemon service is active and running. It's also enabled. Okay, so it's going to survive a reboot. And so now I can go ahead and exit out of here. I actually do a, uh, yeah, let's do a, I've already restarted the SSH daemon service. I don't need to restart the Pi, but I am going to get out of here and uh, I close the connection. So I'm now back on my uh, Arch Linux system. So now let's see if I can log in as Pi. And so let's do an SSH uh, Pi at 192.168.1.90. And it's asking for the password. and I was able to log in. All right, so I'm logged back in. Uh, so let's try to log in as a, a, another user of the system we know that's there, uh, and that is test user, because I uh, had test user up earlier. Let's see if we can get in as test user. All right, so let's go ahead and exit out of here, get back to uh, Arch Linux. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can log in as test user. Um, who's a member, not a member of the admins group, um, and see if we can get into the SSH server. So let's SSH, wait, 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 SSH test user at 192.168.1.90. It's asking for the password. We put the password in. Permission denied. Okay, so let's put it in again. Make sure we typed it right. Permission denied again. All right, so it looks like test user has not been allowed to log into the SSH server because he's not a member of the admins group. So let's try root now because we also denied root access to the SSH server. So let's do SSH root at 192.168.1.90. And I know what root's password is for sure. Put that in and permission denied. Let's try it again. Okay, one more time. Okay, so it looks like both test user and root were denied access to the SSH server, which is exactly what we wanted to accomplish. So we've hardened the SSH daemon server by denying root access and by denying any user other than a member of the admins group access to uh, the SSH server. So uh, this has been a video on hardening your SSH daemon server uh, by modifying the sshd underscore config file. Keep watching. Um, I'm going to add a video um, to include the deny.host file for hardening the SSH server and also introduce you to fail to ban. Have a good day.